Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome to Pods of the Multiverse. We are an unofficial D&D podcast where four of us get together and play 5E rules in some of our favorite settings. My name is Jeppy, and I will be DMing for our time in Iceland Dale and joining me at the table for this season are three of my favorite people. Uh, I'm Scala. I play Wink Woggins, who's having a great time learning a bunch of sea shanties. <laughs> I'm Andy. I play Everett, the reborn ranger, who even after a horrific attack from a demigod is still just trying to grind out his dailies for better sockets. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm Jimmy. I play Jib, the sea elf fighter, who is trying not to let it go to his head, but he can actually call himself a sailor now for the first time in his life. Yes. Hell yeah. And Everett, oh, daily commitments are such a chore. But you know what's <laughs> not? Is a monthly commitment to our Patreon, which we would really appreciate. If you do that, you get exclusive content like table talk and see secret cool channels in our Discord. You will not get socketed armor, though. We can't promise that just yet. Maybe maybe later. Maybe we'll have like a platinum tier. Um, anyway, yeah, do the Patreon thing. Do the Discord thing. Hang out with us on Twitter. All that engagement stuff. You've heard it before. You'll hear it again. All that out of the way. Let's get into the episode. Previously, our heroes escaped the wrath of Oral and Bryn Shander alongside Simon, Kessa, and the rest of the crew. After a heated discussion, the party soon came to the conclusion that Vetus, on orders from Felbarash, worked to head to Solstice Isle to use Kessa's kidnapped niece Denna to try and destroy Oral. After assembling a crew, the party made chase towards Solstice Isle to rescue Denna and prevent further bloodshed. Once the crew finally made it to the open seas, they soon came into contact with an enemy Vita ship, ready to engage in combat. Roll initiative. 22. <laughs> Fucking finally. There it is. 17. 14. My familiar is at 11. For the purpose of combat, except for when you're engaged with an enemy deck side, movement is relatively free. You don't need to give a turn to go deck side to taunt. The turn is going there and taunting the enemy. Okay. So with our movement, we can go up and down above deck, below deck. Yes. For example, Wink said, I'm not at the cannon. You can say, I go to the cannon and fire this turn. It's not go to the cannon. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let me roll these. I mean, cannons are fun and all, but I want to get my buckle and swash on. Yeah. Everett doesn't have a rogue subclass yet, right? I do. Oh, you do? No subclass, though, right? Right, that's what I meant. Yeah. No subclass. I, yeah, have one level of rogue, so. It wouldn't be swashbuckler anyway. <laughs> no, it wouldn't. It would be the murder you in one turn subclass. Assassin. Assassin. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, that seems like a pretty good combination. Assassin and gloomstalker. Yeah. All right. Up first in this initiative, already at the cannon, Jib. All right. I've only ever seen these, you know, on ships in harbor. Never actually operated one myself, but I think I could figure this out. Flint also has a cannon and or can repair ship. All right. So what do I do here? Do I, I do you load the ball Wait, or do you load the powder before the ball, Flint? Flint shows me how to operate the cannon and I shoot it. Ball in first, buddy. You don't want to be loading up nothing and then accidentally have it fire. Get the ball in there. Worst case, you accidentally launch it where you don't want it to go. They're expendable. Get them out of here. Shoot them at that enemy ship. Ball, powder, go. Ball, powder, go. Ball, powder, go. That doesn't sound right to me, but I'll trust you. I'm pretty sure. All right. Like 83%. <laughs> you Jeppy or Flint McRocky? Flint. I'm zero okay. percent sure. Okay, <laughs> that's because that's how right you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is just an attack roll. So if you're doing the cannon, yeah, it is an attack roll plus four to hit. Okay, and then if you do hit, it is two d ten plus five damage, and you get to choose what you fire at: a cannon, right, the sails, or the hull. Okay, and do I get the sense that these have different ACs? They do have different ACs. You'd imagine the hull is reinforced, and while it's easy to fire on, it might be more difficult to get a good hit on it. Okay. The sails are large and flimsy, might be your easiest target, and cannons being small, it's a smaller target. Okay. One last question. So this is, I'm going to light a fuse. Is that what we're talking about here? Yeah. You light the fuse, you can close your ears, you can say fire. Got it. Okay. You can pet the cannon for good luck. You can do whatever you want. Okay. I'm going to load it up just like Flint told me to, even though I'm not sure if that's how it should work. Maybe it works differently in this world. And I'm going to light the fuse, pull down my ear flaps. <laughs> And if that's literally not how cannons work, you can defy Flint's orders and fire it correctly. It's very much not how cannons very, work. Very much not how cannons work. You can make the mistake and then correct Flint. Like, yeah. That's only a nine. 
maybe because you did follow Flint's directions, it just goes and rolls out of the cannon and just plops into the water in front of you. Flint. Shit. Now, uh, 83% the other way. That's it. All right, Flint. All right, it was Jib's turn. I get the sense that Flint is someone who prefers chain over rope, so I'm skeptical of this guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's one kind of person Jib doesn't like. It's a chain guy. <laughs> Kessa's turn next. She will beckon Ren to the deck. As soon as Kessa pulls out the sword, she does the come here gesture. Ren comes right on in, and Kessa will swipe at her as Ren is jumping to your ship to engage with Kessa. It is a natural fucking 20. Wow. Okay. Take my job, will you? That is a way to start. (laughs) Combat. 17 piercing damage to Ren. Ren already looking quite hurt. And then as a bonus action, she will look back deck side and use her bonus action Master of Tactics to grant you the help action, Everett, signifying where best to land a blow against Ren should you choose to attack Ren. Ooh. Yeah, she is a mastermind rogue. Whoa. Yes. I didn't realize these yeah. boats were close enough that we could get into a melee combat. Yeah, so one thing you can do is you can go deck side and taunt a soldier up to have hand-to-hand combat. Okay. And what that does is you're no longer able to fire a cannon, but neither are they. And if and when you kill them, there's one less person to fire cannons for the rest of that combat. I see. I don't know that I would have fired the cannon if I realized that I could have engaged hand-to-hand. But that's fine. Captain told you to man the cannons. That's true. I followed an order. That's true. All right. It is Ren's turn. Ren will immediately react. Ren, also a rapier user, will go for her. Kessa. Of course they are. This is pirate shit now. Kessa's AC is 15, and Ren. That ain't it. Ren, reeling in pain, feeling overwhelmed on an enemy ship, takes a jab and just goes between Kessa's arm, torso, and just completely misses. But Everett, shiny new help action in hand. It is your turn. Awesome. It is time. Come, Shiva. I attack with advantage. I get a 19 plus mod. Hits, yep. And this is using Dread Ambusher. This is the first round of combat. I add my sneak attack because I was hidden. I add the Dread Ambusher because first round and the longbow damage. Here we go. It's a dumb number. That is going to be 17. Did you just say 17 and you're still counting? I still have the Nether Sand up because the Nether Sand lasts an entire rest. 19. But only once a rest. Only one charge per rest. I see. So I won't use it. That is 17 damage. Yeah. As if you're at a campfire, Everett, please tell us a tale of how Ren came to fall <laughs> in Icewind Dale. <laughs> Absolutely gone. I imagine that Ren and Kessa are fighting over the sides of these two ships. Okay. Maybe they're on a gangplank or something. And she reaches out to swipe at Kessa, and I just loose my arrow right through her stomach. And she falls over into the water. Yeah, I was hoping for that. I was hoping for the falls into the water flavor. All right. Ailments. Dead. That is the ailment that she has. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anyone else I can see on the other ship? You can see three soldiers, no names, run-of-the-mill soldiers at the cannons. I will say that the cannons cover most of the window. It will be very close to impossible to hit at a soldier with your boat. You can try, but this angle would make that AC quite difficult. But you can, again, taunt them up as part of your action. Everett's going to try and shoot one out of the window. First round, I get an extra attack. Okay. So you're going to try and shoot one through the window, like trying to avoid the cannon? So even if they have half or three quarters cover, I can still see them or part of them? It's dark in there and it's small, but you can see humanoid movement. Okay, great. I'm going to Hunter's Mark one. Okay. I bonus action, Hunter's Mark, and I fire. And that is, I am going to use the Nether Sand on this, total of 22. 22 actually does hit. Excellent. Left, middle, or right cannon soldier. Whichever one is the farthest away from me. It'd be left. Great. No sneak attack. And we've got 16 points of piercing damage. That was a max roll for my second attack without sneak attack. Nice. You heard an audible cry of anguish, but because you can't really see, you don't know to what degree this person's in pain, but you know that that blow did a number audibly on the person. And that's my turn. All right. Next up is Senior McRocky. Will attempt to fire a cannon at the hole as well. He saw Jib going for the hole and thinks concentrated fire is the way to go. Really couldn't wait to test out these cannon mechanics, but might have to wait for another time because that was a fucking nine. Yeah. 
That's what I got, too. See, because Flint, oh. Flint doesn't know how to load a cannon, I think, is the issue here. Equally bad gunners here. <laughs> Jibe forgot to reload mine. Next time we're going to get him. I just know it. <sighs> All right. That's Flint's turn. We go to Wink. Okay, I'm going to get up on the deck. I'm going to, if I can, cut a rope and swing over to the other ship. All right. And I want to try and fight some people up here. And if I can, I want to do this in such a way where if there are some people on the deck, I can thunder wave and try and push them off the ship into the water. Okay, I'll say that there are people milling about the deck, but combat-wise, they don't really matter. But what you can do is taunt one of the cannoneers up. Okay. And you can only do one at a time. Okay. I'll try and taunt one of the cannoneers then. And then attempt what I said and try and push them off the side of the boat with a thunder wave. So I'll say that whether it's through stomping on the ground or calling out, hey, left boy, or whatever, like, you can choose which cannoneer to taunt. <laughs> <laughs> left boy. I don't <laughs> Hey, Spook McMookie, come up here! All three in unison. Which one? <laughs> Whichever one he is, the least lily livered, come up here and fat me! All right, sounds good. The middle cannoneer will come up and engage with you, gets into range of your thunder wave, and you can go ahead and make that happen. Okay, they make a con they save. They make a con save? Okay. <laughs> you just convince them to come take damage. <laughs> yeah. It is uh, 14. Oh, you know, maybe yesterday or the day before, that might have been enough. But I've leveled up. My save DC is 15. Get in the water, Spook McMookie. Hell yeah. <laughs> Get him. How does this work? I love it. So when they fail the con save, they take some damage. Okay. Um, eight points of thunder damage. But they're also pushed away from me 10 feet. The way I'm going to try and set this up is that they're pushed off the side of the boat into the ocean. Okay. Gotcha. Fucking get them. All right. In ocean. <laughs> You do this, and two other people deckside also go flying off. I'm not considering this NPC out of combat. I'll just say they have to give up their next turn to get back situated. Okay, fair enough. So I put under ailments in ocean. Okay, bonus action. I'm going to give bardic inspiration to Everett. Nice. Oh, nice, nice. I thought you were going to say Tasha to the laughter and make them laugh while they're in the ocean. <laughs> I'm not a sorcerer. I can't quicken my spells. So I will sing, oh, ain't that bow and fire free, sink that mook to the bottom of the sea. <laughs> oh, yes. D6, Everett. Nice. All right, that's Wink's turn. Up next is Jim, your bird. All right. I think my familiar is going to fly over to Everett and give the help action. Wow, you guys are really juicing me. Okay. You're the only one up there. <laughs> we also know where the damage has come from historically in this campaign. <laughs> Scala's attacks aren't going to be rolls with advantage, necessarily. So. And Jimmy's rolls aren't going to lead to attacks. So. <laughs> Sorry. Great. <laughs> no, yeah, no, that's what happens. The bird's going to fly over to Everett and give the help action. I'm not sure exactly how this bird can help Everett, but it can. Great. You seem familiar. Nah. Very well. Good luck the albatross especially when at sea awesome that's the familiar's turn we go to the leftmost soldier that was hit by everett fucking arrow are you kidding me and fires at your sails shoot not good really not good did land a natural 20 on the sails Uh uh-oh on the sails thankfully these enemy cannons do not hit quite as hard Yours are two D10s, theirs is just one D12. And as we all know, D12s never roll well. So Not they never roll well. They can, certainly. Seems suspicious that our guns are so much better than their guns. Well, we've got Flint McRocky. Where the fuck did they get this boat? I need to put these up to the camera. I need to put this up to the camera. 12. That's a 12. They're both 12s. They're both 12s, everybody. And I rolled two fucking 12s. That's cool. Yikes. Wow. Great. Your sails are gone. 35 damage from the cannon fire. They're weakened for sure. Okay, the next to the rightmost cannoneer goes and will actually fire at Flint's cannon time. Are you fucking kidding me? Another nat 20? Another fucking natural 20. Yes, my apologies, everybody. Hey, the dice are the dice. This is a game played with dice. I don't get the holding up dice thing. Look, I can hold up a natural 20 also. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. That is 18 damage to Flint's cannon as well. And then the final one, you see Scurry up and is on the deck, and next turn will make their way to the cannon. And what was their turn doing that? All right, back at the top of the order. Jib, 
Okay, so I can aim this cannon at really any part of the ship right now, the hull, the other cannons, the sail. There are two manned cannons, one unmanned cannon, and the sails and the hull. Okay. You also have the option to go topside and taunt one of the soldiers at you or board their ship. That's all done within a single turn, and then you could get into melee combat. Hmm. Flint acknowledged that he had the wrong order, so you might do better this roll because you're actually going to load the cannon correctly. But you can do whatever you want. Still just relying on a flat roll, though. Whereas if yeah, I go I top side, there's a chance I might get triple advantage on some melee attacks. You know what? I'm going to disobey the orders given to me by... Uh, what's the captain's name? Tanner? Tanner. 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 You know, I don't know how to operate a cannon, and apparently neither does Flint. So <laughs> you know what? I'm getting out of here. I don't know how to work this thing. I'm going top side. Yes. Thank you. Now, I'm sorry, one more time. What are my options for engaging a melee combat? Yeah, you can swing over to the other enemy ship. You can fight the one that just got back up to the ship. I will say, Link, you cast Thunderwave in the most optimal way possible to hit as many people. So I would say you're in the center of that hole. This soldier just got to the ship. So I would say they're 10 feet from Wink. So you're not going to get a flank advantage on them if you go to them. And then your other option is to taunt a soldier to you, which you could do on the enemy ship or your ship. Either way, you're not going to be able to get a flank advantage with where everyone's at. Then I'm going to swing over to the other ship and I would like to engage engage the one that just climbed back up onto the ship. Okay. <laughs> oh, is that the music from Gladiator? No, it's Star Wars. Come on, it's Star Wars. <laughs> Shut up. How dare you? I hate all of you. Andy, if you can Easter egg some of that music without getting us into the copyright shithole, that'd be fine, though. That's Disney, Jeppy. I definitely cannot do that. Oh, that's true. They have the whole Infinity Stone gauntlet. They they can just snap (laughs) us out of existence. (laughs) Yeah, you engage. You can go ahead and roll your attack. All right, good. Yeah, I'm going to grab him. Okay, that is a 19 to hit. Yeah. (laughs) Yep. I haven't swung my weapon in a while. Where are my dice? Ruin their day. I suspect you might. That's the plan. All right, so with my saber, I'm going to... That's good. 11 piercing damage. As I swing across and I cut the rope right above where I am, so I land on this other ship, roll and stand up and just jab it. Okay. You didn't see it coming. Yeah, this soldier didn't see it coming. They just got back onto the ship and moments later are met with Jib, who... Tell us a tale of how random soldier number one came to fall on ice window. I kind of just did. I didn't realize I could do it. Yeah, you did. Yeah, I did all of that, and... Then he dies. And, yeah, just in a really cool move. I guess I ended him. You did. All right, let me go ahead and add dead to their list of ailments. They went from in water almost immediately to dead. Yeah! All right, that's Jib. We go to Kessa. Kessa will also grab some rope and jump to the enemy ship, and she will beckon the soldier that she saw Everett loose an arrow into, into the window. So that soldier will come up, and she will engage with them. Rolling... 25 hits for sure. She's gonna do pretty bad damage. Six piercing damage to the soldier who reels back, looking definitely hurt at this point, but not out of the fight just yet. She's gonna hold off on her master of tactics for now, and we'll go to Everett. How many people can I see by the cannons of this enemy ship? There were two left that were on a cannon, but Kessa taunted up the one that you had previously hit. They're looking pretty wounded topside now. The enemy to hit by the cannon will be harder to hit than the one topside. You also do have help in Bardic, so. They're not next to each other? No, there's just the rightmost cannoneer and then one more soldier topside. Okay, 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 okay. Then I'm going to go ahead and shoot the one that I wounded last round. Okay, that's the one that's topside. I draw my bow. I use my help action from this lucky albatross. That's right. And I roll a nat 20. Oh, God. (laughs) That was a five and a nat 20. (laughs) Yeah, you beat its AC by a lot of numbers. So here's the eight... And that is a total of 14 piercing damage. Okay. Hey, Everett, <laughs> tell us a tale of how this soldier came to fall in Awesome. <laughs> so this soldier was taunted up. I duck behind the side of our ship, and over the railing, I draw my longbow, and it strikes them through the chest, and they collapse in it. Kessa looks back to you, gives you like a nod of approval. Wink, your topside enemy ship 
only one enemy remains that you're aware of, and it is the cannoneer on the right side. Okay. Can I go down and just menace this fool <laughs> and try and, you know, get him to surrender? Take a prisoner. Again, I'm treating it as a relatively free action where you can taunt them up topside. You can do that social check topside if you want to. I'm just trying to think what would make more sense, mm-hmm. right? I feel like if I taunt them to fight, it's going to be a mite silly if they get up here and... Then I'm saying to them, no, I don't want to fight. I want you to give up. Hear me out. It also, in my mind, is almost like, come on, what are you going to do? What option do you have left if they come up and see all of you? But I'm just putting that out there. Okay. Hey, mook number three, I think your buddies might need some help up here. This soldier comes scurrying up the way. Let's call this one a dwarf male. Comes scurrying up the way, looks at you. They're running towards you, and you can stop them at any point if you want, and you can tell me how far away from you they get, because you're not going to engage in combat, so if you want to, like, stop them as they're running up. I give them enough time to see their two (laughs) dead cannoneer buddies on the deck. (laughs) Cool. And I gesture to them, your friends, they weren't too smart. They thought that they was a match for us. Now you, you strike me as an intelligent fella. Why don't you just set down your weapons and come on over to our brig and we'll get you nice and situated and you ain't gotta die. Jory and Rory always said I was not the intelligent one. Now's your chance to prove them wrong. Go ahead and roll persuasion. Okay. That's an eight on the die. So 17. I'm gonna let it ride. Not like I could do anything else. (laughs) That's a 17. (laughs) I'll allow the physical situation that I am in with these dice to persist. (laughs) Scala's other option is to hand wave over the dice as they magically rearrange. Yeah, just gonna shift over to another reality where that wasn't the case, community style. Yeah. Let me go ahead and contest. Even on a 13 on the dice, that doesn't get up to a 17. So you think I'm intelligent. You got that look about you. The dwarf drops their weapons and starts to head in your direction. All right. Cool. With that, we can actually exit initiative. You have cleared this enemy ship of all of its threats. Anything you want to do immediately? It's you, Kessa, Jib, and then Mori, by the way, rounds out the rhyming scheme of these soldiers topside with you, and I think Everett stayed on the friendly ship. You reckon we could take this ship with us? We got enough crew? I was thinking we might wanna, especially if we're looking to try and talk our way out of more of these scraps. Having a ship what belongs to Vetus might be helpful in that. Very good point. Flying Vetus colors. Get right past him. I lean over the side of our U-bow ship towards my allies. Blood to thirst really suits you. And here I thought you were going to finish that one wink. Well, violence is a tool, but so is rhetoric. So, really it's just finding the right tool for the job. Very well. Then perhaps they can tell us about Operation Runeseeker. Hey, Maury, you know anything about that? Your boss seemed to be keen on it. Well, the job just started, and I didn't pay a lot of attention to what it really was, but I have a few details, yeah. You know, we got word that we needed to make our way down and learn a little bit more about... I think, was it was it giants? I think it had something to do with giants. I don't really... As Maury is starting to say this, however, Jib and Wink, I need you to both make me some deck saves. Oh, okay. Uh Uh-oh. What exactly is happening to cause us to make these saves? So as this conversation is going on, you feel beneath you a bubbling under the water. Huge amounts of rumbling. You don't know exactly what it is that's surfacing from underneath you, but you feel that the ship beneath you is starting to be forced up, maybe even into the air. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. It's a 15 deck save. It's a nat 1 for a total of 5. Okay. Cool. Can I roll something just knowledge-wise about what's happening here? Being Jib? Yeah, you of all people can absolutely roll insight or nature. Neither are good options. Uh Uh-oh. Flat 19, nature. Okay, great, cool. On a 19 nature, especially given your communion with the sea, you know that likely what's happening here is some sort of sea creature is surfacing underneath the ship. Do I hear any creature noises? You just hear loud, higher-pitched squeal, whine kind of noise, but it doesn't sound like a word to you just yet. Okay, not a word, but any kind of emotion behind it. It sounds confused right now. Wink, you save. So, Wink, what happens is you are able to sense the movement of this Vita ship. You quickly grab a rope and swing your way back to safety. Jib, Kessa, and... Mori, however, do not react in time as you are flung back to the U-bow ship, it being close enough to do that. You only take five bludgeoning damage on your fall, actually. Oof. 
That could have been much worse. As the Vita ship is flung into the air, and you see a giant, pale sea beast emerge, and it surfaces and just stays at the top of the water and stares down at the U-bow ship. What the fuck is that? Mythical creature. A sperm whale just happened. (laughs) Ah... Okay. Of all the creatures of the world, the whales are some of the weirdest ones. Strange, strange sea beasts. But seeing a giant-ass whale this close to your ship is certainly alarming. So yeah, this whale surfaces. It just launched that ship. Jib, you can tell just from its sound, this whale looks confused as to why there would be cannon fire and the ship right there. It's seemingly alarmed more than it is aggressive right now. Oh, can I get this whale's attention? Its one eye is facing you, bow ship, so you could probably flail your arms around and if you have a way to communicate with it, I don't want this to turn into the same bit from Finding Nemo, but that's where we're going. I don't remember that bit. That's fine. So It's pretty low intelligence. It's intelligence is three, so you probably got to keep these concepts pretty basic. Okay, yeah. So Jib waves down this whale right at its eyeball. Is it looking at yeah, me? Yeah, it's looking at you. It notices. Okay. It's looking at all of you. Its eye is like the size of you, so <laughs> probably sees you all. Jib opens his mouth to speak, and... You hear. (laughs) And so basically, I'd just like to get a read on this whale. I just want to ask it (laughs) generally what it expected to find here. Okay. Not anything too in-depth. Okay, cool. What you just did has to be part of our, like, end-of-season rap song that goes on SoundCloud, by the way. So Great. Okay. Yeah, the whale responds. (laughs) You're not the only one that has to do it this episode. That's right. You can get from that basically what you already knew. It's confused. It doesn't know what's going on. And it is wondering if you're a predator or an enemy, basically, is the read that you get from its response. Okay. Jib lives in the water and has ways of communicating with animals to show that he means them no harm. What do you want to do exactly? I want to communicate through either body language or whale language that I am not a threat to this creature okay great yeah that will require persuasion for that one if it's better you can also give me animal handling i was wondering it's not better so i didn't mention it okay (laughs) i know athletics is your best maybe you can flex your muscles real hard athletics isn't my best oh sorry no acrobatics is my. oh it's the other a one got it could impress it with my acrobatic skill anyway that was a dirty 20 persuasion oh i mean this thing's intellect is super low and his wisdom ain't much better yeah it is immediately calmed by your words you can see it sink a little bit deeper into the sea it doesn't go under but you can see it sink comfortably a little bit more it closes and reopens its eyes a sign of feeling safe and secure and comforted okay i want to just turn to my companions and say don't move i think we're gonna be okay how'd you do that oh well you know live in the water i encountered creatures before you kind of pick up the languages they're all pretty much the same underwater there's not a lot of consonant sounds that you can actually articulate when you're in the water so most of them just are different variations on ooh, you know that kind of thing but i could go on but i won't it's just like you know talking to a pony then you somewhat do you talk to ponies Ever just slowly backs away from this conversation <laughs> and the whale slowly, quietly. We're what they call a two pony town, so you know we like to make them feel welcome. Oh, well, that's nice. Cool. The whale is starting to look a lot more comforted. Anything you want to say to it, it's starting to lower itself into the ocean. Can you ask it where the Skull Island is? Maybe. Oh yeah, right. Let's see. Oh, and keeping it basic. I'm kind of trying to figure out if there's any island or landmass near here. Okay. I don't have any way of describing a skull to a whale. Cool. This one I will have you do animal handling for. All right. It's a 10. Okay. Could I help here? I'm proficient in animal handling. Use some of my farm halfling (laughs) know-how to maybe... (laughs) Yeah, just describe how you want to give the help, but of course you can. Throw it on us. What do you got? (laughs) I mean, Wink is a farm person. They've been around animals a lot in their life, so they're going to approach alongside Jib and try to make similarly soothing and reassuring gestures and sounds to try and let this whale know that we're not going to take advantage of it, I guess. Cool. I'm here for that. That sounds great. Jib, you can roll with help. Excellent. 
Now it's a 12. Cool. On a 12, the whale doesn't respond directly, but you do see it starts to point itself in a direction as it submerges. It does submerge deep enough where it is now out of sight, so you're not going to be able to follow it, but it is giving you a heading. Well, I think it's beckoning us this way. The boys back home will never believe this one. Where's that other boat now? Roll perception to see how the boat's doing, but it's open waters. It's a low DC. Okay. It's an 18. Everett looks around. 16. I got an eight. Wink, you're able to see that the ship has been capsized. On a 16 and 18, Everett, Jib, you see that it is not in shambles, but it is significantly damaged. You won't be able to board this ship, but, you know, if you had enough rope, you could maybe try and tie this thing to your ship and try to repurpose it later. That's something you can do, but it's turned over completely. So getting it back on the right orientation and everything is not something you could do in the middle of the sea. Are there any crew from that ship that are in the water? You see, yeah, a few people floating around. It's hard to tell how many are alive versus dead, but you can hear on the higher rolls, Wink, you probably don't hear this, but you can hear some people crying for help. You wouldn't be able to tell without bringing your ship over there, though. Well, should we help them? Help who? Wait, who's crying for help? I didn't hear it. You oh, said, damn it. You I, said I didn't no, yeah, hear it. Oh, oh, oh. Jeppy, you literally <laughs> forgot. Sorry. No, 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 I did. It's not, I did, I, I did, but also I no. thought that was Scala playing and it was like, fuck them, who we help. Like, I thought that was like, oh, my, damn, what a turn for Scala's character. <laughs> So these are people who are in the lower decks of the ship? Yeah. As it was capsized? Okay. Yeah, there might be one more person that was topside, but Wink did shove them off earlier. They're probably also okay. It's hard to say who's alive, but the majority of the people in the water are the crew that were below decks. And I do hear yelling for help. You do, yeah. Jib's going to dive in the water and swim towards this wreck. Okay. How far is it? I'd say the, the boat probably got flung because it got launched into the air. It was probably... 30, 40 feet. I mean, it's oh, a okay. huge ass whale, but swimmable. For Jib especially, any of you could swim over there and grab somebody and make it back without exerting yourself. I was under the impression that because we beat or killed all of them, that there wasn't anybody left other than this Mori guy. Like, how many people do we hear? So, real quick, the people below decks were the people with oars and shit. There were no more cannoneers. Gotcha. Okay, so like, non fighter. You ended the threat. Got it. Which is why we exited initiative. Yeah. Okay, got it. And how many people you hear on your rolls, even though they were hot, it's hard to differentiate. Probably the sound of maybe six, seven, eight voices, but hard to make out for sure. How many people survived versus died in that wreckage? Got it. Okay. One more question, if you don't mind. Everett sees Jib jump overboard. Everett looks down into the water. Can I tell how cold I think that water is? Nature? For this there one? are like ice flows around, right? Yep. That's a 19. Yeah, it's fucking cold. Yeah. Jib's probably not having a good time. On your hot perception that you had earlier, you also could easily throw down a rope and start to help beckon people to swim that are able to. I lean over to Wink, who may or may not have noticed Jib take off yet, and I say, It would seem some of us have not grown tired of playing the hero. And I point towards the commotion. Oh, I suppose not. I call out to Tanner? Yeah. Captain, yep. Bring us about! There's folk in the water over there! I'll start uncoiling some lines to throw to these people. Kessa will lift herself up. She got knocked down, so she's collecting herself again. Uh, She comes over to you. In my work and in my experience, having heart like this usually doesn't pay off. Doesn't end well. But I know how these crews work. I don't think they'll come after us. And then she starts to help you unravel some rope as well. Wow. Everett walks by this, scoffing at those words, and wants to take Mori, our new dwarf prisoner, by the shoulder. You're coming with me. I believe there is a brig below that will fit you quite well. Nice. Sweet. All right. So Jib has dropped his sword on the deck and shed his top layer of armor, dropped his shield, and kicked off his boots, too. Uh, They call those flippers. That's right. (laughs) Flippers. Obviously. And did a very elegant-looking dive and breaches the water, and you just see him rocketing towards this other ship capsized sweet look at him go roll acrobatics just to see how successful you are and how many people you can carry under you and bring back safely in a trip okay is that cool oh man i'm giving you acrobatics because it's better but athletics would be the other one and not to be too prescriptive on this but in frigid arctic waters i would suggest possibly also a constitution save to avoid cold damage sure being from the north jib you don't have anything in your character sheet about that do you no. Should have been a Triton. Then in that case, I will take Scala's direction there and go ahead and make me a con save as well. Okay. 
I've had this DC planned for a very long time, if you couldn't tell. All right, that's a 14 on the con save, and the acrobatics is only a 10. I'll give you the con save because, again, you have a pretty good way with the water, even if it's cold and there's a lot of adrenaline in this moment, and you're doing the right thing. That gets you beyond the DC. Yeah, that's right. For at least the first few minutes, I'm not going to even notice the cold because I'm from the cold. This is a different level of cold, though. Yeah, for sure. And you do suspect as you jump in, you can't stay here for very long. So between that and the strength that you can muster, you're able to grab two people that look to be pretty passed out. You can't tell if they're dead or not, but they're not moving. You grab two bodies and you make it back to the ship. Okay. Did I see anyone else who was conscious under there? Yeah, you did see people that are conscious. But again, as you're making your way back, you can see now that the ship is heading towards these people and your friends are bringing rope down to help those others. All right, that's fine. Cool. Sweet. Yeah, I don't think there would be any checks to do what you're all planning to do. Wink, Everett, Kessa, I think that can just happen. You are able to bring that ship over and you'll take in five rando peeps that are in the water and still alive. And you can do with them what you'd please. Those five people would all be, you know, oars, workers, or whatever you want to call them. Rowers? Rowers! Fuck, why is it that every time I have a hard time with a very simple word, Scala is like, this word? <laughs> like, yeah, that very simple word. Rowers. Yeah. The five of them are rowers. But they are passed out? The five that make it up are not, but the two that you bring up are passed out. All right, I'm going to tie the rope to them and then tug on it as if to gesture to the people up. Yeah, Yeah, we haul them up. I do confer with Tanner briefly as we do this. We're provisioned to take on a few castaways, yeah? We are, but they go to the brig. Reasonable enough to me. Until we prove that they can party. We're not partying with them. You get my meaning? I'll say in Halfling, the Halfling version of Akapish. (laughs) <laughs> All right, cool. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, on that topic, I know it's getting cold, and I will roll another con save if you want me to, but is there anything I can recover from that other ship? Mm. Fresh water, any other types of provisions, as it were. Make me a perception check. No, it's five. Yeah, you don't see anything. Okay. You don't see anything that sticks out. Like You see wood. Nothing sticks out as useful. Nothing worth going back in the water for. Did we leave anyone behind? Everyone else is not moving, so there are probably... A- other eight something bodies presumed dead presumed dead wow that sucks yeah that fucking confused whale real prick that one yeah well trashed the boat killed some people gave us a heading though yeah gave you a heading all right i'm gonna climb back up on our boat cool anything else y'all want to do otherwise we're gonna continue with the navigation the dc will be lowered as a result of the sperm whale interaction obviously (laughs) that was some mighty impressive haul and wink oh Well, thank you. Coming from you, that means a whole hells of a lot. You know, I was thinking the same thing, Jory says from up at the nest. Fine job you did. I don't have to do this scene right now, but I'm still with Maury. Let's do our first navigation check as the ship's making its way back out. And yeah, we'll resolve some of that stuff with Maury. Okay, nice. 17 from Wink. Seven. Mmm. I'm gonna... Woof. How late in the day is it getting? It's hard to say for sure from your vantage because you are deep in the sea and the sky is mostly twilight. But if you were able to guess based on when you woke up and how long you've been at sea, it is most likely getting into the evening time at this point. Great. Because I just rolled a nat one, so I'm going to go ahead and use my last knowledge of the past life on this. So the plus four wisdom and the five on the die, I bring it up to a (laughs) ten. Nice. Jib, what'd you get? Oh, for my navigation check? Seven. I credit my one to me being more preoccupied thinking about how I'm going to torture this prisoner. All right. Honestly, the crew and the navigator, Jory, rolled super hot this time. Hmm. So your boat follows that course that the sperm whale sent you on. While this is happening, though, Wink, Kessa will come up to you. She wanted to let you know that the boy back at Care de Naval, by the time I left, he was doing quite well. I left him in the care of Krennic. Well, all right. That's good to hear. Maybe teach Krannick some responsibility. (laughs) (laughs) You and I think alike, friend. That's exactly why I did it. That fool... Well, it's no wonder Cardinaval was such a shithole. They deserved better than him. But he cares. That much is evident. He just hasn't focused it in the right way. Maybe someone like Alisair will bring it out of him. Well, I weren't there too long, and I'm somewhat slow to judge. But seems like there was more than Krannick causing trouble for those folks. She looks out to the sea. I know you're not wrong. You're slow to judge, may I ask. What was your first take on me? Well, my initial impression of you was that you were putting on a very professional display that 
Doing things in a certain way, a way that you're comfortable and accustomed to, is important to you. So routine, procedure, those things matter to you. And the other thing is you only see what's at eye level, if that make any sense. Looking down at you, she nods. I guess one more time, you're not wrong. But things are worth deviating from, if in a calculated way, when something really important is on the line. Guess I ask you a question? Sure. She cuts her eye contact from you, still looking at the seat. I don't know how long you've been at Vetus, but this might have been some years back. You know a soul what goes by Yamali? Eastern fella. Yamali. The name sounds vaguely familiar. They didn't work any of the details that I did, but some people get all the cushy jobs and have nothing but bright, flowery things to say about Vetus. I'm a company woman, make no mistake. I live my life in routines and order, but even before the situation with Denna, Vetus is not known to be a kind and understanding entity. Well, I don't know what to make of all that. What do you reckon you're going to do after all this? If we get out of this and Denna is still alive, she's from Bremen. For better or worse, I've made a reputation here. Maybe I can find something to do, but... Burn that bridge when we get to it. Let's hope we get there. And she continues to look out to the sea. Everett, you want to intimidate the living shit out of this poor soul in the brig, or what do you want to do? I thought you'd never ask. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I say nothing as I guide Mori down below decks. I find the nearest brig with a sturdy lock on it and the key, and I walk him in. I walk in as well, and I close the door behind him. I turn around, and in both hands down in front of me, my axe drawn, I stare down at this dwarf very calmly. You are not finished telling us about Operation Runeseeker. Please continue. I know you're not going to believe me, and I know I'm going to disappoint you, but I don't know much. That whole thing about me being smart, it ain't true. I'm not that smart. I'm the dumbest one there is. But all I know is, is that it's about giants and it's got something to do with runes. Can I start by making a history check on that? As far as if I would know anything, either anything we've heard while in Icewind Dale, or maybe even anything I've heard on the roads about generally runes and giants. Sure, you can make me a history check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> Not great. That's a 14. On a 14, you don't gain too much more, but you are able to recall a time when you were with the Black Road Company, maybe at a fireside with some of your compatriots, but there were tales of giants. You don't remember if it was current or if this was centuries ago, but giants exist in Rome, Icewind Dale. It's on the tip of your tongue, but on a 14, you don't quite remember the name of the location that they talked about where giants dwelled or currently dwell. Well, I cannot say you are wrong. I am disappointed. Tell me something, Mori. Where is it your ship was heading? Well, that's it. We were diverted. We were on Operation Runeseeker and got recommitted to Frostbite. We were headed towards Grand Skull. Something I don't remember exactly. Some island. Skull. I see. And where were you coming from? We set sail north of the Iron Master. I'd say we'd been at sea about not more than a day before we had to turn back around. We were headed north. And then we were told to go to this Skull Island something, and meet the Vetus battleship there. A very insightful one last question before I leave you here alone. How far away are we from this island? Do you know this? I wasn't the one at the helm of the ship. We were just given orders to go in a direction. I was on a cannon, for God's sakes. How the fuck do I know where we're going? You must understand that I am simply trying to be as thorough as possible in my job. Do not take it personally. And with that, I turn around, I lock the cell, and I leave. Just a quick moment of appreciation for the character growth of Everett not rolling insight or intimidation that whole encounter. Uh, Jeppy, the first thing I would like to do when I walk out the cell is roll insight. (laughs) Damn it. Oh, okay. (laughs) On what in particular, though? I want to know the heading, how many days off, if he knows anything more about the... The journey? Okay, yeah, go for it. So that is a 15. Yeah, on a 15, Maury knows nothing about how much longer the trip is supposed to take. And you shut the door and you remember hearing that Grimscale, which is the name of the destination that Maury didn't even know, is a moving island. 
you recall that from your previous conversation. So this dipshit certainly wouldn't have that information. And then if I have a little more time, I did have one more thing I wanted to try. Mm -hmm. Can I try and remember if during that combat, the cannoneers would have seen their captain fall? I would say you don't know if they were paying attention, but they would have had a vantage to see that for sure. I leave this cell for about four or five minutes. Okay. And before anyone else comes down, if no one else comes down, I want to cast Disguise Self as Ren and come back. Mm -hmm. I come back okay. acting as panicked as ever it is comfortable acting. What did you tell them? You have to tell me what you told them. I'm going to randomize whether or not he saw Ren die, okay? You cool with that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Rolling a d6. We'll see how it goes. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. More. <laughs> <laughs> you know the result, because I don't want to have to do this in terms of acting. I shrug my shoulders. <laughs> Mori looks terrified <laughs> as you come in. <laughs> Sorry. Ren, what the fuck? I thought I saw you die. Listen to me. You have to listen to me. What did you tell them? Was there something in the fucking water? I'm looking at a ghost. The heading. Tell me you didn't tell them the heading. The course. Ren, I don't know the heading. And you're a fucking ghost. What is in my head right now? <laughs> and the operation. You didn't tell them what we found, did you? Found? We didn't find shit. What is this? Can I insight that? If he's actually just spooked or if he thinks that there's something going on here. Yeah, yeah. Does Mori get to roll insight on any of this nonsense? <laughs> I guess, yeah, Rory should roll something. I'm just taking what I can get at this point. <laughs> I got a 12. That's actually what Rory got, too. What's your modifier? For insight? Eight. I rolled a four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Mori is not on to this at all. He is genuinely bewildered. He has no idea what the fuck could be explaining what this is. Because he definitely saw Kessa murder Ren and Ren fall into the ocean. He saw that. Awesome. Everett murdered Ren. But I'll, I'll get past that. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's right. You did get the final blow. Kessa started it. Okay. In that case, in that case, I've dragged this on long enough. Please, if any of them come back, you have to stay quiet. You can't let them know. Don't give them anything. Mori is just fucking bewildered and terrified. Everett will simply say, then what use are you? And knock him out. This is not Mori's day. Mori's had much better days before. Okay, you leave. Are you heading back topside? He's having a better day than almost everyone else on the boat, though. Yeah, oh yeah, Mori's situation is better, <laughs> for sure. This is the problem with playing non-good characters, is I was really ready to kill that guy, but I, I don't know. I feel bad. I can't do it. It's tough killing any character that's part of a rhyming scheme. I mean... <laughs> Except for Bippo and Bappo, of course. Obviously. obviously. <laughs> Some exceptions can be made, but... Yeah. Everett seems like a pragmatist. Killing this guy doesn't seem to serve any purpose. All right, so I'm assuming you would choose to come out of disguise self after Mori is knocked out. Yes. Okay, cool. You do that. Okay, and then I leave. All right, awesome. Anything else you all want to do? Otherwise, this navigation check is going to go by pretty uneventfully. You're on a steady course at this point for a while. Onward. Onward, indeed. You are at sea navigating now, hazard-free, though there are no unique landmarks. Eventually, you see in the distance a very, very large skull. That must be it. Jib said it best. That must be it. <laughs> you see this skull, and you head in its direction. At this point, no navigation check required. However, you do also now see, as time goes on, the skull is getting larger. You're heading in its direction. You do see, probably a few hundred feet in front of you, a large Vetus battleship heading also in the same direction. I'd like to get out my spyglass and see if I can make out any crew or soldiers or general numbers what we're looking at ahead of us. Yep. Go ahead and roll me perception. Let's say 16. Okay. Yeah, cool. On a 16... You can see that the side of this battleship has six cannons. You can see that it seems to be powered by some sort of other device because you don't see sails on this ship. And on a 16, you do notice Garen Kang himself walking and scanning around and acting as a captain of this ship. <sighs> Shit. I find Wink and Jib. Uh, real quick, Kessa would be there as well. I find the rest of our party. Kang is aboard the battleship. I would expect nothing less. He's 
Off to make a show of this, I'm sure. This don't look like a winning fight to me. I could say the same thing from what I could gather. Prisoners or no, we are, in the size alone, greatly outnumbered. Now, if I were to have any sort of plan, it'd be this. We can probably assume they're going to take the straightest way to Skull Island over there. <laughs> if we break off, try and land on the other side, come night, maybe we can sneak into whatever beachhead they've set up, get our girl out, and be gone before they know it. Uh, a stealth mission, then. Because we know how successful the last one we tried of those were. I think it was fairly successful. We all lived. Jimmy, insert the siren's blaring sound. <laughs> <laughs> You got another idea? I'm open to suggestions. I ain't perfect. I do not mean to come across as rude. It just seems that if they were going to dock with that ship, I would not be surprised if they took the girl inland with them as soon as possible. Everett's right. If they're here for what we think they're here for, Garen Kang will take that girl inland. If they're planning to use her to fight Oral, they're not staying on the beachhead any longer than they need to. It is late. They may take a rest. Safest place to do that is on the ship. We'd have to hope that that's the case. Otherwise, we're doing a stealth mission, and our destination's a moving target. Can we see how big this island is starting to appear as we approach it? You can give me a perception check on this if you'd like. 22? Yeah. You don't even need to tell the island. Just the skull itself is massive. And knowing that the skull itself is but a fortress on this island, this is not an island that you're going to navigate quickly if you sail all the way to the opposite end, that will take time. And then navigating inland all the way to their ship will also take time. We certainly can't afford to go all the way on the other side of the island, wink. But we may be able to dock close enough where we're not seen. Hope that we're not seen and try to cut them off. If we want to play it even safer, we could go to the other side and try to meet them at whatever that is pointing towards the skull. Or we wait for them to start deboarding that ship and we try to attack them by surprise on land. I see no other options. She'll look to you, Jib, since you haven't spoken up yet, and see if you have any ideas. So we're coming up behind this boat? Yeah, you're, let's call it 500 feet away. Okay. You start getting closer, they'll be able to reasonably start making some perception checks against finding you. Right, they'll be able to see us soon. But they're in motion? They're also moving. Okay. And they're not headed towards you, they're headed towards the island. Right, of course. But since we're coming up behind them, presumably we're moving quicker than them? Yeah, you are moving quicker than them and also taking a better route than them. Again, they were a large ship, they couldn't take that river network that you took, which bought you some time to catch up to them. But there's no possibility we could maybe take a wider berth and get there before them? We're too close for that? The wider berth would be difficult. You could get there coming in at a little bit of a wider angle, hoping they don't see you and landing and then trying to attempt either a direct attack on land or stealth mission. But either way, we're not going to be able to get to where they are presumably going to dock before them. Probably not. With the way at which you're pacing up to them and the distance of the island, no. You couldn't do it in a way where they wouldn't just see you right next to them. And do they seem to have a tall mast, any kind of lookout? Very evident. Everett rolled the perception, and Everett, I'm sure you would relate this to the party, but you didn't see sails, but you do see like a lookout tower for sure. So reasonably assume that someone will eventually be able to spot you. They may even be able to start spotting you pretty soon if they happen to look behind them. Well, doesn't seem like we have too many options here. I think the stealth plan is our best. If it is between that and navigating that place, pointing to the skull, I would agree. If we do want to consider some sort of direct attack, think there might be some way to get them to split off? Any way to make a distraction? Oh, I think I know someone who can make a distraction. Jib gestures to the bird that's circling above. I think we're going to need a bigger distraction than that. Everett, if you could just make me a quick con save. A nine. All right, cool. Your head begins pounding. <clears throat> and <laughs> again, these anti-dramatic... One psychic damage to you. Jeppy, you can deal more damage to us. It's okay. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, but the dice decided they didn't want to. You, however, through this pounding headache and the discomfort that's coming over you, you feel with certainty that whatever connection you've been feeling is close by. The girl is close. She is on that ship. It's my Dena on the line. I'm willing to stealth. I'm willing to fight. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. But if whatever we choose isn't working, just know that she's my priority, not you three. I will do whatever it takes, even if that means abandoning you to save her. I'd rather you know now. Appreciate your honesty, Kessa. I turn to her, and I lower the heavy scarf around the bottom half of my 
face, very calmly. I can honestly say that I feel the same way. She gives you a stone cold look. You can roll insight, though. A 17. 17. She is absolutely alarmed by your appearance, but someone like Kessa would never, ever, ever let that be physically known. And then I put the scarf back up. Well, look at all us. Heartless bastards, one and all. Look, we're going to get farther working together than we're going to do working alone. So I might not wait for the first sign of trouble to go abandoning your crew. Just a small recommendation. Then what are we well, doing? Then. Look at Everett and Kessa besties all of a sudden. No. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. No, no. Well, then we better form a strategy that is going to use all of our available skills. Hey, Kessa. Yes. How did Garen get that big scar across his neck? The name Vetus comes from Vetus Oramond. Vetus and Garen started the company, so to speak. Their relationship had its problems. It ended, well, it ended with that scar on Garen's neck. And Vetus is gone. So a personal dispute, was it? Or all-out combat we talking about? To the death. And you don't mind me asking, how is it he went about doing it, killing Vetus? I wasn't there. He doesn't really talk about it. Garen is a brutal fighter. Have you seen him fight yourself? I've only heard of it, but I've seen him hold his weapon. I'd imagine that whenever Vetus managed to get that cut across his neck... Garen swung down that great axe and brought Vetus into two pieces. That's kind of what he does. Cuts people into pieces, you say? It's what I've heard. It's the first item for Jib's conspiracy board. (laughs) (laughs) Garen's not so much that way anymore. From what I've been told, what happened with Vetus changed him. It's why he prefers to sit in the background, controlling things. Well, I'd like to avoid getting into that fight if we can. People like that, they don't get to that sort of position by being bad fighters. So, here's my plan, and again, open to comment. If we can avoid their notice, find another safe landing, or safe anchorage, somewhere off where it looks like they're going to land, we come up at night, we watch the boat for a while, see if anyone's making a trek in. If they are, we follow them, see if we can find a good opportunity to get Denna out. If they don't, then we make our way onto the battleship. Same general plan. And what if we are caught once we are inside? Well, then we got to fight. Are you willing to make that choice? Well, at that point, I think the choice has been made for us, but I think a fight and retreat might be sensible. Everett scratches at his face. I can't help but realize that Kang might have been resurrected from this fight that he had. Can I roll insight on that? I'm trying to think if there's anything else you could roll that'd be more suitable. Religion or arcana, maybe? To tell if someone's been raised from the dead? Or history, right? Because you yourself are a return. You can also roll history. Right. To get a sense of if you get from him anything you know from your own self. Mm-hmm. History, that is a 18. On an 18, you know enough about having been brought back that you can tell Garen simply survived a rough encounter. There's nothing at work there. Okay. As ever ponders that, he says, If the stories are to be true, then once again, Wink, you show a great deal of wisdom in this. Let us be sure we do not get caught. I got an idea for one escape route that might work for me and a small child. How big do the cannon ports look? (laughs) You'd be able to guess that if you were in the ship and you dislodged one of the cannons, Mm -hmm. you could easily get through the port. With the cannons in place... And you don't know how big of a girl. You know that she's 12. You know that she's also human, but you do not know how big she is. Okay. So she's probably taller than me at this point, but... Not too much. Still short enough. Not too much taller. All right. So I apologize. Can you just succinctly, what is the plan? Because it sounds like there's consensus now. I just want to make sure I know it before we move forward. So this was the plan that I laid out. We try to avoid their notice and find a berth for our ship that's a little ways off where they're going to land. Then when night falls, we go to the ship, we stake it out. If it looks like they're going to make the march inland at night, then we follow that away party. If it's not, then we... I don't know. Does... does What's the name of this ship we're on? Yeah, I don't think you named it, and I didn't describe one on its side. You bow one. You bow one. I think it then defaults to the standard seafaring vessel name which is Bodie McBoatface. Oh, obviously it's Bodie McBoatface. Yeah, obviously. It fits the naming scheme. <laughs> it fits for the naming scheme for a lot of other <laughs> shit in this world. 
So, so does Bodie McBoatface have a dinghy? What's a dinghy? And that might give you your answer. A rowboat. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I would say the dinghy is on the side that you were not manning the cannons. Yeah, then we take the dinghy to the battleship, board the battleship, try and rescue Denna, get back to the boat, escape. Well, I like that plan. Okay, cool. So the first thing you want to do then is like create a wide berth so you can scope out what they're doing overnight? Yes. yes. Evade their notice. All right, great. The way we're going to handle that is we're going to do basically a navigation check, but you're going to use your stealth mods instead. So we're going to do this as stealthily as possible. Because the crew will be steering the ship, they will be part of this role. And just as a reminder, laws is available to use for this role. I was just about to ask what our laws status was. Laws is ready to go. They are hankering to be useful. All right, I think this is an important enough check. I want to bring laws in on this. So this is a stealth check. Correct, Amundo. Okay, here goes. Oof. Oof, too. Great. I also rolled oof. I got the halfling nat one. <laughs> Which is a two? Yeah. Oh. Two. Hey! Nice. Dice <laughs> yes, curse good air buddies! <laughs> Well, I got a natural 18, which is a 26, so there's that. Okay, and with your mod, Wink, where does that get you? Seven. I'm actually at eight. Laz is going to roll first to help the crew. All right, that'll add a little bit to the crew's roll. Kessa as well, and then Jory also rolls in this. Okay, Jory. All right, Jory on the nat 20. Yeah, Jory. Let's see Tug McTie up do this, Jory shouts. (laughs) Yeah. All right. You start to make your wide berth, and as you do so, you do see the Vetus battleship start to turn in your direction. Uh-oh. Well, we are faster than it. We should also turn. Okay. When you say turn, what do you mean? Run. Oh. Is that what you all want to do? You all want to... Yes. I want to avoid this direct confrontation, if at all possible. Okay. If you do get away from it, you're still a large ship. How are you going to hide from it, is what I'm not getting just yet and i'm not saying it's not possible just what would the plan be once you do outpace it i mean are there any possible obstructions here any ice any part of the island that we could sail around that they would lose sight of us anything like that there's not coves or anything pockmarking it it's all just ice flows that lead into an icy beach okay maybe a large enough iceberg you could hide behind but in terms of docking it's all pretty visible There's not coves or anything to dock into on this particular island, at least as I read it from the map that I've seen. Okay. I guess the other thing is, what are their priorities? How long are they going to chase us before Mm -hmm. they are going to try and go back to the island? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. That's something we could also figure out, too. Maybe we turn towards them. This could be our chance to board. I don't expect that's going to end well. No, but it'd make a hell of a story if it did, wouldn't it? Sorry, I got excited there for a second. No, you're right. Jib, I don't want you to think I'm not brave, but discretion is the better part of valor, and I don't see a good angle on this. If you got one, I'll hear it. Everett, you reckon you could hit Garen from a distance? Have we turned the ship yet? I'm still allowing you to deliberate on this one. Oral flew by and froze time. How far away do I think they are now that they've begun turning around? At this point, they're probably 300 feet away from you. So you still have a decent lead. You'd probably keep that lead. Your ship is a little bit more lean and faster. Yeah. I am a good shot, but I doubt it would be enough if he is as strong as they say. And now that we have lost the element of surprise, that is even more against our favor. Everett, you would also be able to know just based on lots of expertise with your arrows that if you were to get in range to fire on Garen you would also be in range of the enemy cannons I mean technically I could shoot him at this range with disadvantage but oh yeah that'd be the most exciting combat ever (laughs) just if I had the help action or if I was hidden to metagame it as much as possible that would be a flat wall Garen will probably walk out of fucking arrow fire after one round, but yeah, you can meta it. (laughs) After Everett says this, he does think to himself for a moment. Let me put it another way. I would have one good shot, Jib. One. And then what? We run? We fight? Garen's lived through much worse than a single arrow. Perhaps. All right. I have one more outlandish idea. What if we allow ourselves to be taken? Board the ship that way. Improvise from there. They'll take our tools, they'll take our weapons. We'd be fat in the same fat, but from a disadvantage. And if he is a professional, that is the best case scenario. Do we have a current plan A? Is it just run? I don't think so. Not since being spotted. Since you've been spotted, no. Yeah, I think our plan A relied on us being hidden. (sighs) 
for what it's worth, your average was a 14.6. They rolled a flat 14 and plus a 2. Garen's mod is plus 2. How fast did this ship turn? Not nimbly. I don't have a miles per hour for you. But you turn faster than it, if that's what you're looking for. Could try to lead it astray. Get back before it. Oh, I got an idea. How far off from shore are we? You're 300 feet from the Vita ship. The Vita ship is probably another 900 feet or so, like three football yards worth. Football yard. Maybe if we took the landing vessel from here, let the big ship run off, lead them a merry chase. We take the little boat to the shore, and we're camped out waiting for them whenever they decide to actually make their landing. Wink, this is, this is very clever. I raise you this point. And Everett pulls out the tiny hut charm that we got from the Chewingas. I believe this can be cast on a small ship or anywhere, really. It would allow us a certain amount of invulnerability while we try and make our way to shore. Well, sounds like we got ourselves a new plan A. Right. It does last eight hours. I did lift this up before we got into it. Yeah, I just, what are you trying to be invulnerable from? So, Liaman's tiny hut is a protective barrier to some extent. To a great extent. It's just the caster has to remain inside it. Yeah, it's an immobile dome of force. Ten foot radius is pretty big, is the only fly, I see. So mechanically walk through your plan here, Everett. We get on the dinghy, we cast the sphere. Okay, on the dinghy, on the dinghy. Yeah. Yes. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, that part I missed. I thought you were casting it on the U-bow ship. I'm like, so you're just gonna no. let the ship get fucking battered while you're on this dome? <laughs> no, no. I am here for it. The tiny hut probably wouldn't technically save your dinghy, but I love this, and I want to let this happen, so I'm cool with this plan. Even though I think reasonably they could just fire at your fucking dinghy. But I'm also going to allow you a stealth check when you get on the dinghy. And you can totally cast Tiny Hut when you get on there. And I believe... What did it say about color? It can be any color we choose. Exactly. We can make it the same color as the water. Nice. Kessel will just say, they won't destroy this ship. They'll repurpose it as best they can. I can't speak for what exactly will happen to this crew. They won't be killed. But let's just say on the way back we may need to rescue them from the brig. Very well. We should hurry. All right, then the four of you, including Kessa, will go and make your way towards the dinghy. What a cute word. Let's do another group stealth check just to see if the Vita ship continues to make way towards the U-Bow ship or if it sees you and starts heading towards you. Okay, so you want this check before or after we're casting this? To me, it doesn't matter, but when you would make this check is when you're shoving off with the dinghy. Okay, so we set the dinghy in the water. I cast Tiny Hut to the same color as the water using the charm. All right, I'll say with that, You all can roll with advantage, including Kessa. Nice. Okay. (laughs) So my blue dice was a 1. Wow. But my red dice was a 17, so that's a 25. Kessa rolled 7 both times. I got a 21 here. I got a 24. Nice. Yes! I don't think Garen is going to beat this one. (laughs) Wow. Rolled really hot, but you all averaged out at a 20. Garen rolled a 16 with a 2 mod, so Oof. the dinghy makes it through. You make your way there. No more hazards, no more navigation. It's a straight path to the island. You see, as you make your way to the island, the Vita ship heads towards the U-Bow ship. You can use your spyglass and see what's going on there, Everett, as you're getting close to shore at this point. Okay. 19. What you do see is the U-Bow ship started to make some chase to give you all time to get to shore. So they brought Vetus further out to sea. Okay. But then gave up the chase so that you all could carry out your espionage mission. And you do see that people are being brought onto the Vita ship. You don't seem to see any fatal hostile takeover. Just some rough housing and people shifting from ship to ship. So you presume the crew is left alive and relatively safe. After they finish boarding all of the prisoners from the U-Bow ship, you see that they begin to tow that boat with them back to shore. And it's going to be a while before they get to shore. They have taken the crew. The chase is over. Why'd they let themselves get caught? They were faster than that other ship. Perhaps they saw us make it to shore. I do not know. This charm will dispel if we leave this boat. Do you think we should simply try to stay aboard and hide near the shore, or do you think we should try and hide inland? I think we stay here, keep eyes on that Vita ship as long as we can, and if we can't, then we start moving. Very well. All right, I will say that at this point you all can take a short rest because it's going to be a while before the Vita ship makes its way to land. As we're doing this, and as I'm 
considering playing my Song of Rest, Wink will strum a few plaintive chords and say, And we need a name for ourselves, I think. Mm. Can't really write a song about our exploits if we ain't got a proper name. Don't let me get in the way of this, Kessa says, and smiles at you a little bit, Wink. What did Wink literally just call us, like, half an hour ago? I don't... You were like, aren't we all a bunch of bastards or something? Heartless bastards one and all? <laughs> Why, Wink, I believe you already did that, not but an hour ago. As Everett looks through the spyglass out the hut at the approaching battleship. How do you reckon? We may all be bastards of one form or another, but I do not believe us to be heartless. Perhaps some more black-hearted or still beating than others, but... I mean, up here, wouldn't it be cold? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> this isn't my place. <laughs> the cold-hearted bastards. Well, it certainly is menacing. A lot of stuff rhyme with cold. We can probably make something work from that. <laughs> Well, I tell you a story now that you ought to know. A three cold-hearted bastards in the ice wind snow. We came of a night to a cultist lair, and when we left, there was no cultist there. Mm-hmm. Cross the frozen tundra, mm-hmm. scale the wall of ice. And if you see us passing through your town, I'm gonna give you some advice. Don't get too bold with the people underneath you. Don't count on gold to get you very far. Ooh, now we done told you this warning, so you best be gone by morning, or you'll find what kind of cold. We are. Woo. Yeah. Kind of need a second verse, though. I'll work on it. What do you think, Jib? I don't know that I relate to it too much. I found the two of you to be some of the warmest people I ever met in my life. God damn it. God damn it. <laughs> well, that's what makes it funny, I think. I'm so- sorry. Not my place. Not my place. Oh, it was meant to be ironic, was it? Oh, okay. I don't know what it was meant to be. This isn't my group. <laughs> Everett. <laughs> I'm having some serious Alwyn flashbacks right now, but Everett, it's taken nine games for this to happen. (laughs) So, Everett, leaning down towards Wink, winks beneath his hood. Okay, cool. You all come up with your name. The Vita Ship docks. Actually, as the Vita Ship comes up, why don't we go ahead and do one more stealth check? That seems right. All right, I'll take that. 23. Also 23. A 22. Nice. Here's Kessa's rolls. Kessa also rolled a natural 20. Okay. Good fucking luck, Garen. Garen fucking rolled a natural 20, but still does not beat your average roll. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? It's a big F you. Didn't you say his mod was a plus 2? Yeah, your average was a 22.59. So you round up to 23. He beat his... Holy shit. Yep. You round up and beat the 22. <laughs> well done fucking narrow to say the least all right yeah after some time passes you start to see some activity happening where the vita ship is so go ahead and make me a perception check 18 not one but halfling 11 natural 20 26 all right all of you see garen step out into the wild here it is dark out torch in hand you see with garen Three other figures, hard to make them out at this point, and the silhouette of a little girl as well. You see them leaving the ship. Everett, another con save from you, please, as you see this silhouette. Mm, not again. These con saves, that's a seven. Oh, there it is. Well, the psychic damage is starting to ramp up, folks. It's two this time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. This minor migraine here is... She is going to do the same. All of you can see this. You see the silhouette of the young girl. You just see her lurch over and put her hand to her head as if she's in some discomfort or pain. Something is happening. She starts to toss and look around pretty intensely. Everett, I need you to make me a stealth check specifically. She is looking around for whomever she believes this link is. Okay. Fifteen. Okay. All right. Something is... Something is wrong. She does not notice you as she is carried away by Garen and this small troop. Then it is to be a chase. And I think that is where we can end things. Oh. 
Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.